The interface design of the racing head-up display has evolved steadily since the beginning. What you see today is a culmination of research studies published by NASA, the Air Force, commercial and educational entities, extensive flight testing, and pilot feedback. The following is an exploration of the considerations that went into the design. The Galaxy S6 and S7 feature screens with resolutions of 2560 by 1440 pixels. The Bebop streams a 640 by 368 video feed. The Gear VR provides a 96 degree field of view, and all testing was done at 96 degrees. The effects of all these specifications together is the pilot sees a very large, almost IMAX size image at standard resolution. The pilot's field of view is almost entirely filled with the video image, which makes for a very immersive flight. To see the entire image, the pilot must move their eyes and refocus on the new selected portion of the screen. This eye movement occurs frequently and continuously as the pilot's attention follows the optical flow during their flight. Initial designs focused on keeping information like speed and altitude as far away from the center of the image as possible, with the exception of those elements meant to conform with the outside world. For example, the horizon. I wanted to avoid unwanted capturing of attention and avoid blocking anything behind the drawn graphics. After a few flight tests, pilots requested information be brought closer to the center. Despite only taking milliseconds, it took far too much time for the eye to find and focus on information and then find and focus on the optical flow again. The solution was to keep the most vital information near the center of the pilot's focus. Since the flight path vector, by its very nature, points to the center of the optical flow, critical information like speed and altitude are linked to it in very close proximity. The additional information which moves in sync with the flight path vector forms the primary guidance cluster. This keeps critical flight information near the optical flow and allows both to be assimilated by the eye in a single glance. This reduces the pilot's need to move their focus elsewhere in the image to check those critical parameters. We also initially started off by drawing the HUD in front of both eyes. The effect was the HUD was very obtrusive. I started playing around with single eye layouts and we felt like the HUD started to blend with the video image much, much better. One eye was receiving the composite image while the other received a pure video image. This allowed the brain to selectively focus beyond the HUD. There was a consequence to this change, however. During flight, many elements of the HUD started to disappear for the pilot. The brain was struggling to process all of the HUD information flowing into a single eye, while also having to process all of the motion information coming from the video being fed into both eyes. The solution? Use attention capture tricks to bring focus to that information. One way to capture attention is to rely on redundant analog representations of information. The eye is better at detecting motion than a detail like a number in its peripheral vision. The motion of these elements attracts the eye to critical situations and can also be quickly referenced in short glances. Contrasting color is another way used to grab the pilot's attention. Finally, I created different view compensation modes to reconfigure the interface based on the Bebop's different video stabilization modes and while head tracking was on. This was to maintain the UI's conformity with the outside world. The design will continue to evolve as we begin the next phase of testing, which include full speed test and future time trials with both new and seasoned test pilots.